Hey everyone, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2023 Ford Bronco Sport, we're gonna be showing you how to install the Kurt trailer hitch receiver. Before we do that though, let's take a minute, check it out, and make sure it's gonna be the right hitch for you. So for those of you that don't have a trailer hitch already equipped on your Bronco Sport, this is gonna be a good solution for you and help you out when it comes to pulling trailers around or using different types of accessories. To compare this hitch to some of the other ones available, uh, they're extremely similar, honestly. Uh, really, I feel like it would just boil down to what one you think is gonna look the best. Uh, so with the Kurt, for the most part completely hidden, has a gloss black powder coat finish. Uh, there's an e-trailer one available that'll sit in this exact same spot, but with that, it has a matte black carbide finish, which personally, that's probably my favorite because uh, it almost matches the plastic on our bumper perfectly. Blends in a little bit better, at least in my opinion. And then there's a draw tight hitch, which is going to sit very similar to this one, uh, but that has more of a semi-gloss. So a few different choices uh, to pick from there as far as that goes. This is gonna have a two inch by two inch receiver tube opening, which is a good thing. Uh, it's super common size, a lot of stuff will work with it. It's going to use the standard 5 8 pin and clip, one doesn't come with a hitch. If you need one, not a huge deal. Grab it here at E-Trailer. A lot of times too, if you end up buying a new accessory, they'll come with one. Something to look out for there. Safety chain openings, loop style, and large enough to allow us to use pretty much any size hook that your trailer might have on it. As far as the hitch's weight capacities go, it's gonna have some pretty good numbers. Maximum gross tongue weight rating is gonna be 525 pounds, and that's the amount of weight pushing down on the hitch. So that's more than enough for just about any size bike rack or cargo carrier to give you an example. As far as the maximum gross trailer weight rating goes, that's gonna be 3,500 pounds or the amount of weight pulling on the hitch. So there's the weight of your trailer plus anything you might have in or on it. Uh, I do always like to recommend though, it's always a good idea to grab your Ford's owner's manual. That way you can check in there and make sure that your Bronco Sport can handle that much weight safely. We'll grab a couple measurements now, and these will help you figure out what type of accessories are gonna work best. We go from the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube opening. It's gonna be right at 16 inches. So good ground clearance for those accessories. And if you plan on pulling a trailer, probably use a ball mount that has a straight shank. I work for, for most scenarios, maybe even a slight rise, an inch, something like that. If you go from the center of the hitch pin hole to the edge of our rear bumper, that's gonna be about three inches, which is really good. You shouldn't run into too many issues here, but if need be, you can use that to help figure out exactly if any of those folding type accessories you might have can be stored upright without hitting the back bumper. Aside from that, hitch you really can't go wrong with. It's gonna look good and get the job done, so what more can you ask, really? As far as the installation goes, it's really not too bad. Um, you do let the exhaust down some, which isn't a huge deal. It's two bolts, um, and you put the hardware in the frame, bolts right up. You will have to trim a little bit on the very bottom of the fascia uh, to clear the hitch, so uh, just be prepared for that. It's pretty easy to get to and, and um, won't take up a bunch of your time or anything along those lines. So stay focused, should be in good shape. With that in mind though, why don't we go ahead and pull into the garage and get going on it now. To begin our installation, we're gonna be underneath the back of our Bronco Sport. And the very first thing that we need to do is remove these four screws that run along this bottom edge. So we'll have a seven millimeter socket and work our way down to pull them all out. We are gonna to need to let the exhaust come down a little bit, give us more room to work. Uh, prior to doing that though, I like to take a strap and just run it from side to side. That way we can kind of control how fast and how far we let the exhaust come down. On the bottom of our frame, you can see where the exhaust is gonna be connected. Uh, so we're just gonna have this 10 millimeter fastener to pull out. The passenger side is gonna be set up the same way, but over there you'll have a, a wire bundle, with a little loop on it that goes over it. So you'll have a 10 millimeter nut, you pull that off, and then you can pull the, uh, this fastener out. So we'll grab our 10 millimeter deep well. Remove that. I already did the other side. 
So the exhaust should drop down a little bit here. On the bottom of each frame rail, we're going to have this underbody panel that's connected to it with two pushpin style fasteners. And from this point on, whatever we do to one side of the vehicle, we're also going to do to the other side. So it'll be set up the same way. We'll get these out of, uh, out of our way here. So let's take a flathead screwdriver and pry underneath the head of the fastener. And you can get underneath the base, pull the whole thing out. This one's a little different. You can use a flathead if you want. These are in there somewhat tight though, so I like to use a trim tool. Just makes it a little easier. Pop it out, and then we're just gonna take our, that flat there, just gonna tuck it in like that. We'll go over our attachment points that we're gonna use now. So on each side of our vehicle, we're gonna have three openings. This one, this one, and this one. And so that's where our hardware is going to drop through. And to get the hardware in the frame, we're going to be using this hole here on the side as an access hole. Uh, with that said, you know, you'll have to get a spacer block in there and a carriage bolt. And you can get this stuff to fit without modifying this at all, but it's, it's pretty tight. Um, and instead of fighting it, I'm just going to enlarge this opening a little bit. It don't take much. You can use a hand file um, or something along those lines. I'm just going to use this bit, clear a little bit of material out, and, and make it a lot easier on us getting the bolts in the frame. So what I'm going to do now, you can take the coiled end of your fish wire, and I try to kind of eyeball the length and distance from our attachment point to the access hole and put a bend in it. Just makes it easier. And take the coil in. We'll fish that up through our attachment point. And we'll get it to drop down of our access hole there. We'll take a spacer block, put that on a carriage bolt. And that carriage bolt, let's get a thread onto the pull wire. We'll feed that hardware up into the frame one at a time. And pull down until it drops into position. And I'm going to use that same technique and the same hardware combination for our two remaining attachment points there. Since we did enlarge uh, this hole a little bit. We have some bare metal exposed. And just to help prevent any rust or corrosion issues, I'm gonna take some paint and just put it over that bare metal there. We can trim out our fascia now, uh, according to the diagram and the instructions. More or less, it looks like just this flat part around through here. Uh, make sure you don't have anything important behind there, which you shouldn't, but it's good to check. You know, we're wide open. This is pretty thick plastic. I like to use a, a multi-tool like this. Seems like it gives a good clean cut, but you can use a Dremel tool or heavy duty pair of snips, uh, whatever you got. So go ahead and get this opening made. Pop this little piece out. And if you want, you can come back with a utility knife or a file or something and, and clean up some of these rough edges. What our plan is here, when we get our hitch up into position, we're going to secure one nut on each side. All right, and we want to do the one that's closest to the front of our vehicle. And I say that because we've ran into in the past 
you know, when we go to put the hitch flat up, sometimes this opening isn't big enough, all right? Not cut up high enough. Um, my thought is with this plastic, you know, you can always come back and cut more out, but you can't add it. So that's our thought. We'll get the hitch up into position. And by doing it that way, we can hold it flat. If it clears, great. We'll completely bolt it down. If it's gonna interfere, you know, the hitch will be able to kind of hang a little bit and we can cut a little more material out. If you can have someone give you a hand with this part, it makes it much easier. We'll take our hitch, put the hole wires through the appropriate holes. And I like to kind of put a bend at the very bottom. That way, when you push them through, uh, they don't want to pop out on you. one in here and everything's pretty tight so be patient we'll get this up and we're gonna have to kind of peel back on our fascia Go up and over the exhaust Right there. And once you get all the bolts to pass through, remove that pull wire. So here's what I was talking about. If we take the hitch and try to raise it up completely flat against the bottom of the frame like it should be, you can see it's gonna still make a little bit of contact with our uh, panel there. So I'm gonna come back and just trim a little bit more of it out, do it again until it clears. Here's what I ended up having to cut out uh, almost to the top of this indention here is what was needed to you know, be able to sit this up completely flat against the bottom of the frame and not have any interference. And that's exactly why we started small and cut bigger. You know, if, for those of you at home, if your bumper is a little different or you have a different model, um, it's just good practice to do that. That way you don't have a huge hole here uh, when you really don't, don't need one. So not very happy with it. Well, I'm going to tighten this one up just a little bit more. And you can center the hitch from side to side. Um, ours is pretty much spot on. We'll remove our full wires here. And just kind of a point or two, if you're having a hard time uh, getting the nut started because the bolt wants to push up into the frame, you can always come back with a flathead screwdriver and apply some side pressure to it to keep it steady. That'll make it much easier to get the uh, flange nut started. With all the hardware in place and hand tight, we'll come back with a three quarter inch socket and snug everything down. We're gonna make sure and come back with a torque wrench now and tighten down all the hardware to the amount specified in the instructions. Once you get the hitch torqued, we'll raise our exhaust back up. For this little uh, panel here, the hitch is covering up some of the attachment points. And so what I'm gonna do, seems like it worked pretty good. There's a small hole made right here. So you'll push that over the stud, our exhaust stud there, and then line this hole up. There happens to be a hole in the frame there. And I'm just going to reinstall one of the pushpin fasteners, and that'll be sufficient to, to keep everything held in place. We'll go ahead and get the strap removed now and out of the way. And if you come to the edge here, you can take those 7 millimeter head screws, get all those started. We'll snug them down. And with that done, that will finish up our look at and our installation of the Kurt Trailer Hitch Receiver on our 2023 Ford Bronco Sport.